Coming up on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, we'll talk about J.J. Pegues making his decision and coming home. And we'll also meet with Kara McCutcheon and talk a little bit about social media and this Jackson Dart and Michael Trigg phenomenon that's going on. It's, it's, it's pretty cool to think of. And I'll also give you my perspective on that. Anyway, this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast. I am your host, Stephen Willis. There it is right there. Um, I hope everybody is having a good time. Anyway, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Um, subscribe and hit the bell and like it and all that stuff. If you um, hit the bell, their notification system is really good. And when I say that, I mean that you will actually not only know that we have a video, new video posting, you'll know what that video is about. And because of that, you'll be able to determine everything that's going on. So I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah. And let's see, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. All right. So, J.J. Pegues committed to Ole Miss. Um, he, I mean, the rumor is he knew what he was going to do all along. As soon as he got in the transfer portal, he committed over, he came home, and he has an idea. And they're very excited of him uh, um, playing the defensive line at Ole Miss. And boy, oh boy, am I excited thinking about over and over him and Taiwan Malone on the same defensive line. And then you have um, – Xavier and KD and you have Isaiah and you have Jamond and all those guys that go with Cedric Johnson on the end. There's so many different things and so many versatile things you can do on the D-line. Now the question is, do they they do some four-man stuff? Because now they have some people that can play a three technique to go along with the nose guard. Do they mix in some four down looks with those ends? You can put J.J. Pegues out there at the strong side defensive end, and he can more than hold his own. You can put him in a four-eye in a three-man front, and he can more than hold his own at the end position. I'm not even talking about the interior nose guard position, where obviously um, several things are needed. But there's so many things you can do. Down to third down, switching over and putting J.J. at the nose guard, Cedric Johnson on the outside, Demon Clanning on the other side, and just saying go, or Taiwan Malone inside. There's so many things that this allows you to do. This allows your defense to become extremely versatile. Now, I am a huge J.J. Pegues fan. Um, I think he is a super athlete, and if you put him into position to succeed doing the super athlete type stuff, all of a sudden he will make your team even better. He will make you exactly what you want to be on the defensive line. You can beef up on the outside with him and Taiwan and um, KD in the middle and, and just completely go all in on the run. You can go race car package. There's several things you can do on the defensive line. And between Randall Joyner and Chris Kiffin at linebacker, which Randall Joyner and Chris Kiffin have to be almost symbiotic in the 3-2-6 defense because – one of the A-gaps is going to be taken by the nose guard, and the other A-gaps is going to be taken by a linebacker, which means the A-gap fits are going to be um, defensive line and linebackers every time. So it helps that they are symbiotic. And Chris Kiffin, knowing the defensive line and what they do, it's a big boon for that defense. Now, I'm really excited about that. If people are looking at a scheme change, it's not going to happen. If you look at the transfer portal and the people that we brought in, we brought in people that fit that 326. That's not going to change. Some things we do and some wrinkles we put in could possibly change. But overall, the scheme of the defense is not going to change. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets 
outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth with visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your comp competition. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. For the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade to NetSuite.com slash locked. Head to NetSuite.com slash locked for the special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing business. That's NetSuite.com slash locked. All right, a little bit later in the show, we're going to talk about Kara McCutcheon, and we're going to discuss the social media out aspect of the Jackson Dart and Michael Trigg and how it's kind of just blown up. you got misinformation flowing around everywhere. Basically, information abhors a vacuum. Anyway, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. Every day, we are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Do hit the subscribe button. Do hit the bell. And that way you get the notifications of whenever we post a video and you'll know exactly what that video is about. So do that for us. And also, if you watch the video, hit a like for us if you don't mind. So, Jackson Dart, Michael Trigg. And this is the reading I'm getting. Like I said, we do not break news on this program. If you are looking for somebody to break a story, um, you are in the wrong place. We are about giving commentary and we are about giving perspectives. That's what this show is about. And we are willing to take that commentary and perspectives from dang near anybody. Um, so all that we ask is you be good, um, know what's going on, and provide an insight that I want to hear, really. And, I, and I'm, can, you're an expert in a field other than me. So the tea leaves that I get on Jackson Dart and Michael Trigg um, is Dart is, I don't know, 50-50 at best. And Trigg is pretty locked down to Ole Miss. You don't hear much on Michael Trigg. I think he's going to go to Ole Miss and he's going to um, do rather well at Ole Miss, honestly. Um, but we're still waiting on Jackson Dart. And he's, you know, he's going to BYU. And you'll hear me talk a little bit later on in the interview with Kara that, honestly, I think the BYU interview is a favor to somebody. I don't know who it is. I know that they are a heavy LDS family. And there's pressure for him to go to BYU. So it's, it's probably a favor to somebody. Now, we will get into the nuts and bolts of what's going on in the second segment. But that is my opinion of what is going on with this. We have J.J. Piggies. We have, I think, seven, six four-stars, seven four-stars committed through the transfer portal. We're up near 13 or 14 for the whole class. And... I mean, that's a pretty big deal. And these will only add to it. Remember, they're also looking at wide receivers. They're not done. This is a never-ending thing. I, people look at the enrollment date as being the be-all, end-all of the transfer portal. It's not. There's still people that are going to transfer in the summer. There's still a chance to grow your roster a little bit in the summer. And uh, if you remember correctly, Orlando Amana got here in August. I don't think anybody can get here in August now. I think that was a COVID thing. But I'm just pointing out that this doesn't end. It's not legislated. And as long as it's not legislated, we have a coach that is going to try and exploit it all the way to the very end. And so that is pretty interesting. Um, and my opinion on the Dart and um, Michael Trigg situation. I don't know exactly what is going to happen. I don't know um, how it's going to play out. Just know that this is the transfer portal. We're all adults. You know, everybody is emotionally capable of handling this in any way they handle this. If, if you're not, you probably shouldn't be following it this closely to begin with. Um, but we're all adults. We're going to talk about the tea leaves of what's going on. And we are going to um, just kind of present different perspectives on what could happen. Me personally, I think it is a, I think they're in good shape for Dart. I think they've almost nailed down um, Michael Trigg. That's, that's just my opinion. And um, 
in doing so, they're probably going to get here and perform at a relatively high level. So Bet Online would like to wish you a happy betting new year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains, remains the number one spot for all best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website for to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and USC, um, right now to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, welcome back to our perspectives um, feature that we do every week. This week we have a debutante of Kara McCutcheon. You might know her from being the social media queen of all the Twitter spaces, and you see her all over the place. So we had to get on and talk about social media, about Ole Miss, and kind of everything that's going on in this weird sphere that's kind of outside the realm for what normal people really live in. So how you doing, Kara? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me here. Excited to uh, join and kind of talk about everything that's kind of going on in the, from a social media standpoint. Yeah, and, and I've noticed, and I, I try not to get too into this because you've seen my post on social media and what I feel about sources and things like that, but this Dart and Trig situation has kind of brought them out of the woodwork to where everybody has a source. Everybody puts a crystal ball down. Then everybody talks about something else. And it's just really weird. It's like an extreme version of normal for these two kids. Yeah. And I think this is something we're going to see actually over time. But I think when you have um, Dart and Trace in this dynamic, we're going to kind of exploit like what's coming. But you have to look at this whole situation as a whole and why the Dart and Trace um is so intriguing because here, how many times do you really hear about the fact that the offensive coordinator that just left the school's first kind of big recruiting uh, job is against the school he was just at, you know, like, so you're looking at Levy versus Lane and this very first kind of interaction that's big for Levy as an offensive coordinator at OU. So this Dart and Drake's kind of like, transfer portal move for Levy and you hear like, oh, he's saying this about Ole Miss or, oh, he's saying this about Lane. And some of that stuff gets, uh, misconstrued in, in the things that happen while you're recruiting and when these coaches are talking to players and they're kind of like salesmen and what they're trying to bring in. It's just a unique experience because you're seeing two major players between these two schools that just kind of had their first interaction with each other, you could say. Yeah, absolutely. And also, this is just my gut feeling. Like I said, we do not break news on the show. We are not about doing mm -hmm. that. We're not about playing the telephone game or anything like that. But the longer this plays out, it almost feels like this isn't a package deal. Um, I, th I right. think tr I think Trigg is a 75% or greater Ole Miss lean, and then Dart could do something completely different. What kind of read are you getting on that? So I'm starting to kind of see that someone brought up an interesting perspective. None of this, again, is based on source. It was literally hmm. stated in a space. Um, a guy brought up an interesting perspective that, you know, this whole – dart situation could have always been that he was waiting to see what happened with Caleb Williams. And he's kind of playing the waiting game with USC. And that's a perspective you haven't really heard yet. It doesn't mean there's any kind of insight behind that, but he kind of could have gone out there to see where he could go in the instance Caleb Williams announces he's coming to USC. So I think this waiting game we might be seeing here, it, he kind of latched on with Trey and was like, well, I would love to play with him, so I'll go where he's interested in. But that doesn't mean he's really counted out possibly USC. And I think that's one thing that hasn't really been brought up yet, that where does USC sit in this? Yeah, I think we will know that pretty soon. I think Caleb Williams has to make a decision soon because October or January 21st is the last day that Oklahoma can add somebody to the schedule without the consent of the professor. So that that's kind of an important day. And another thing – um, this this day visit to BYU, everybody knew BYU would be involved. Uh, but this kind of feels like a favor to mom and dad, doesn't it? Yeah, I think there. I think the confusion and what people should maybe look at to understand here with this visit um, isn't so much the visit itself. Maybe Dart is deciding what he's doing. I think some of this also is, um, like you said, that he's doing the favor 
to go to the school and it might not be a factor, but it also could be a waiting game. It could be maybe he's trying to see what he's hearing from USC, like what he's hearing from these other schools. Um, it, I mean, I think a lot of this stuff is brought on these hype that all this information is out there and social media is such a plug for that. It's such a platform for information overload. So when this visit comes out, it frustrates people because they've already, you know, when, when, an OU is hearing, oh, there's announcement coming, he's coming here. There's an old Miss person saying the same thing on this side. So when you're getting these back and forth and all this information and then this random visit comes out of nowhere, it frustrates people. And it kind of just makes that they like, we're getting played when really the truth could be this was always in the works. This could always have been something that was coming. Yeah, and looking at social media and what's going on, in this age to where nobody is talking, and that's the thing about the transfer portal is nobody talks. It's amazing. They just tighten that circle up like 15-fold over their recruiting visit because they knew that that was a circus and they don't want to do that again. So everything's typed up. And in that information void, it feels like conspiracy theories and everybody just kind of fills stuff up on social media. I mean, I've, I've seen some weird things on there. And... Is it's just bizarre. What does that? What you attribute it to is just the vacuum of information, or is it because somebody just wants to sound like they know that they want to be the guy just in case they're right? So I think from a perspective of you have two sides of what you're seeing on social media. You have the side of people that this is what they do for a living, and and their job is really not to give you any kind of information that's like 100% breaking news at that point. Their job is to give you what's being talked about so these pay sites and forums that people are going into these these ads are sharing what the rumor mill is what's being talked about what's being discussed so it doesn't mean what they're telling people isn't accurate information of what's being discussed but it doesn't mean that that's what's leading to the decision that's actually being made there's just things that are being discussed and in a more of a rumor mill but that's what they're reporting on so there's that side of it then you have the side of where that's kind of discussed in an open platform like a twitter space where now you have people who come in and these people are saying well i heard based off this and i heard and now you have a ton of people talking about it and then someone goes and posts about it and then that post gets retweeted and now it looks like it's real in a fact mm. yeah it's kind of like um i talk about this all the time Information now does not have to be true. It just has to right. be said. Because if somebody mm -hmm. says it, you can copy what they said, and the wrong or right on it is on them. It's no longer on you. So you have the carte blanche to say whatever you want to. And through all the disinformation and things that go on, um, and I'm not talking about necessarily Dart and Trigg, because this is just permeating all of society mm -hmm. now. I mean, mm -hmm. um information abhors a vacuum everybody wants to sound like they're right and everything is performative so you basically have everybody making a take early defending their take to the grave mm -hmm. and with no idea if it's going to be true exactly yeah, exactly and i think as also too when people talk about sources it doesn't mean that someone doesn't have a good source you could have a good source you could have someone that is related but it doesn't mean the information that's coming out is true like people change their minds all the time you know, in the instance of Dart and Triggs, Dart and Triggs really could have told somebody that, oh, we want to go to Ole Miss, and then someone shares it. But people change their minds. Like, until it's official on paper, I mean, look at Dylan Gabriel. He committed to UCLA. I'm pretty sure UCLA was like, he's coming. Like, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure UCLA was set. And then, boom, like, now he's at OU. So people change their minds, and people have to remember these things, like, just because someone says sources, they could have them, and they could have a great source, but it doesn't mean that information is going to pan out. So you have to take some of that with a grain of salt. Yeah, and, and you can have a source to where this is going to happen on this day and this is happening. It's going to be in a room with a blue lamp. And if there happens, whatever happens, whenever it happens, in a room with a blue lamp, they will claim total victory over what right. they said. <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing in the world. Uh, but that's, that's the nature of the beast. Now, talk about what you're doing on Twitter spaces. And since you are like the queen of the Twitter space and the Ole Miss fan community. Talk about that for a little bit and basically pitch, you know, how you can join and what you're doing. So I kind of, like the Twitter spaces I actually got into, um, or Twitter in general, I got into over the pandemic. Um, I'm someone, I, I live by myself. So that community that you get by watching games with other people was kind of missed. So with Twitter, um, I kind of started on Twitter and seeing, 
maybe that interaction. And then as the Twitter spaces came, it allowed there this community where you could get on and talk to other people and other fan bases and other things. And you could kind of learn from them and learn from other things um, and share your own perspective because not everyone knows everything that goes on. You only see so many highlights. You only see so much things. So, um, and if you look at like we were talking about with misinformation, like not everyone knows everything about your program. And most people actually probably aren't even looking into your program. Like there's a small percentage of really major diehards that look into everything and know every single program out there. And so when you can come in and you kind of can talk and you can bring kind of the interesting sides of the Ole Miss culture and um, kind of some of our football grades. And because one of the best things for me, I get to brag about in there is like, look at the NFL right now. Look at some of your great, like look at Dawson Knox right now. Look at um, AJ Brown, look at DK Metcalf. Like, you know, um, it's good to kind of pump some of that up and like talk about those guys because not, nobody really knew who Dawson Knox was coming into the NFL. So it just opens this platform to have such a community in football and you learn from each other and you kind of get to represent your own program and the size of your program that people don't really know about. Yeah. And yeah. And lots of people get to come in because it's, it's basically not an invite thing. You can invite people, but mm -hmm. you, know, you can just search it and pop in and it's kind of an audio version of social media. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, mm -hmm. now moving on, you have agreed to host on Rave on Sports as well? Yes. Have you? Yes. Okay. Thought I saw your name the other day. I, I had the unfortunate, um, business of hosting the chat for the Missouri game. Um, oh, no. Yeah, that, that, that was, <laughs> that was a rough one. Uh, but it, it was pretty cool. We had nice participation. Hopefully more people will come in as it goes. Um, but it, maybe it can provide a bridge between that Twitter platform and just give you something else. It's a pretty cool thing because with the stats and the play-by-play -play and the lineups and everything they put into it, it's, it's pretty cool. I actually like love the concept of this app. Um, one of the things I really enjoy about it is, like I said earlier, that sense of community. Like A lot of people that come into these things really enjoy um, being able to talk to other people about their program and being able to um, – kind of talk about like when you're watching a game and something happens and you know when you get to share that with somebody else and I think that this platform really provides for that and um I think some of the things we're seeing even with Twitter spaces too like when you get that shared community and the share like everyone's getting mad at the same thing you know when you're talking to someone who's not a fan and they're like well I didn't think that call was that great and you're or that call was fine like I didn't see anything and you just want to like go at that person, right? <laughs> because you're, you're a fan, you're passionate about it. So when you get to share that with people who also feel that way, um, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Um, and real quick before we get out of here, um, how do you, we're going to go back to this trig and dark thing again, but how do you foresee this moving forward? What, what, what's your temperature gauge? So I think for me personally, I think Trig is kind of a lock. I think one of the things we're kind of seeing trending is that everybody's starting to lock in on Dart. And Trig, I think um, you're not seeing as much information there. And it's kind of slowed down on the OU front more than it has for Ole Miss. So I think maybe Trig has made a decision yet. And maybe he's waiting on his buddy. I, I don't really know holdups and I'm not going to like draw something. But just from temperature game and seeing some of this stuff, I, I think Trig is kind of forecast. I think he's coming. Like I think that um we have a very great uh, possibility or confidence in trade being at Ole Miss uh Dart I think this BYU kind of threw me off threw me off a little bit I very much thought Dart was coming with Trig but now I'm starting to see that maybe these two are not so much a package deal as they were before yeah and it's good to know and also coming into this chat if you are listening to this we are in no way putting down Luke Altmaier we are perfectly happy if Jackson Dark doesn't come and Luke Altmaier is the guy. We just need a quarterback to push him. Uh, but we're going to talk about Jackson Dark because it's an interesting thing. It's one of those rare social media phenomenons that happens to where I've got two videos about Jackson Dart that has gone over 500 views. And that is almost 2,000% of what I was getting before on the Palmcast. So, this story is absolutely helping my platform, but it's the point. It's a weird thing. And also, one advice that I would give to everybody is become an expert at picking out information. Find the truth. Because most things that are sourced, um, whether it's on a message board from an insider or on social media, has a nugget of truth, a kernel of truth in there. 
fig learn how to figure out what that is and this will be so much more fun for you. A hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree, Stephen. Um, and I think in this situation, Julie, I think some of the, the fun of it is having that interaction to kind of, um, you know, the, the chaos is always a little fun, right? Like when there's a little bit of control chaos, it's fun. Like it, it makes the story more interesting. It makes uh, the attention. I, I also kind of at the same time feel bad for Dart because I sure hope he performs under all this attention he's getting. <laughs> So I think that's a big factor because he's getting all this attention if he goes somewhere and just bobs and that's really, you know, so I hope the hype like for him and the, you know, all this attention like kind of backed up. But um, I think that that's kind of some of the fun we've always seen in college football. Um, it gives us something to discuss. It kind of brings it like learning a little bit more here, of um, how this process works, because we're kind of still new to the transfer portal. So I, I, I think a little bit of it is kind of good for college football in general and just being able to discuss um, the dynamics here, because there's so many different ways you could go with this story and, and what's happening. Yeah. And it also shows you on social media and the message boards, who are the emotionally immature people reading this? Stuff? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's absolutely crazy. It's like, it's been four hours. Why don't we have a decision? And they just start freaking out. And it's like, well, just calm down. Good grief. This, this, is a, this is probably the most important decision this kid has made. Give him as much time as he needs. I, I agree. I agree. I, I don't think it's really on the kids. I, I just think there's a lot of hype, a lot of information. And, and we're in a wor world now where information is limitless. Um, it's out oh, there I everywhere. I wasn't talking about the kids being emotionally immature. Oh, I know. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying in general. <laughs> I think some of these kids, like, people are looking at, like, what they post, you know, like, mm. oh, they post a picture today of this. Oh, they post a picture today of this. I, I think a lot of that, like, you know, maybe they come in a little bit, like, to mess with people. I know um, with the guy that uh, we were kind of looking at that might have gone to Rutgers, might have gone to Ole Miss, ended up coming here. I call him Iggy because I can't say his last name. Um, Igbenosan? Yes. Uh, so I think, like, you know, they have their fun with it, and they post some of the things that kind of make you think. Um and like kind of go with their decision, which makes it fun. But I think in general, like a lot of this information, this hype um, comes just from the fact that we have so much access now and so much uh, is put out there these days. Yeah. And, and everybody needs to be aware. And they're, if they're worried about what Jackson Dart was, is doing, Matt Corral would do have done the same thing um, if he was mm -hmm. coming right now. The, this the same type personality, Jackson Dart and Matt Corral. People forget he, he, he was a little bit of a kid. I mean, he started a fight in an egg bowl, you know. Um, so the, the, this is a same, similar type personality. So don't, don't bash him too much because you see where that progression can be. Um, but Kara, thank you very much for um, tuning in. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first mm -hmm. listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Um, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, and also give me a like if you um, are happy. Tomorrow we will have Tom Vanderfield giving his perspective on what's going on. Now make your second listen, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q, with an expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. But um, Kara, thank you very much. And um, thank you so much, let's, Yeah, let's do it again next week. <laughs>